Hello, everybody. Thanks for checking out the Liberty Mastermind podcast again. We planned on doing a series for leadership, and this is going to be a leadership-related episode, and this one's titled Due Diligence. Here we go. Hey, Captain Jack. Hello. Pretty good, man. How are you? Oh, not, not, not good. Not good. <laughs> you, you know those days where every fucking thing that can go wrong goes wrong as soon as you wake up. Man, I'm sorry. I've had a pretty good day. At 1.30 in the morning. I've been out of the military for almost two months now. At 1.30 in the mm-hmm. morning, I got a text message that said, you have to respond to work tomorrow for the military. Because Congress passed a resolution and blah, 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 and call your supervisor. I don't work for the military anymore. That message wasn't for me. It was something sent out by a bureaucracy that just presses send all, right? And my number's still in the system for some reason. So that was a great start this morning. Didn't they uh, uh, fuck up your DD-214, though? Several times, yeah. I have about eight of them, and I've only been in the military once for active duty, and I separated, and then I got in once for the reserves. So maybe it's not real. Maybe maybe they messed up again, and you're still well, technically enlisted. If they did, they're not paying me. So let's tie this into due diligence right off the bat. Your job is to send out text messages, right? Mm-hmm. Maybe you find out who you're sending text messages to. If you're going to hit send all... Maybe take an extra step and say, send all that are active duty. Or send just those that are active duty and reservists. Like, maybe you exclude the people that left the fucking military, right? Right. Now, I did my due diligence. I went on Google, and I went, who the fuck do I call to fix this? <laughs> There's no an- there is no answer, right? Yeah. So, uh, I-, I called one of my bosses weeks ago, and I said, hey, I'm out. Please stop sending me these automated messages. And she said, okay, we will do. A couple days later, I got another automated message early in the morning. And this is a lieutenant commander in the United States military, right? This is like five or six ranks up-ish. Right. Big dog, right? Big deal. The lady can't pass a physical fitness test. And her job as a military lieutenant commander, as an officer in the military, her job is to support the bureaucracy and document things on paper. She is not a warfighter, right? Which makes you think, how important are these wars that we're fighting that we're promoting super high-ranking officers that aren't warfighters? They just they support the machine, right? Right. So she responds to me the second time, and I say, hey, fix this fucking problem. I'm not in the military. Take my name off of all your phone number lists so that I don't get these messages anymore. And she says, without due diligence and with no leadership, she says, oh, I tried to, but it's like a three-part process. I only did the first two parts. Jesus Christ. What does a reasonable <laughs> what does a reasonable human do at that point, right? What else would you follow that up with? You were fucking two-thirds there. Why not just finish uh-huh. the third step? So, like, if it were me, I would like to think I would say, dude, I did the first two steps. I'm so sorry. I'm doing the third step right now like i did one and two I, i'm sorry i let you down let me fix number three no it was just oh i only did the first two steps right i responded and said could you please do the third step right which obviously they didn't i still got a message today and that was supposed to be handled weeks ago so did you in turn call her at 1 in the morning i'm gonna you know what let me set my alarm clock i'm gonna do that tonight because i'll be up late yeah do it Ooh, yeah i'm gonna do that Yep. I would do it every freaking morning until she gets it done. Yep. Hey, good morning, ma'am. Is this an emergency? Yeah, it kind of is, because uh, I don't work for you, and I got woken up at one thirty yesterday morning. So could you please do your job and take my number off all your phone number lists? I don't... Uh, are you kidding me? Yeah, I know, right? Sucks. It sucks being woken up at one thirty in the morning and for this, doesn't it? can you do me a favor it? and email my personal email account when you've confirmed that that's done? That'd be great. That way I know and I'll stop bothering you. Yep. I love that. So here's another leadership principle. This is a bonus. Uh, when you have a problem at work, 
and it and it involves the bureaucracy and people higher ranking than you or people in administrative ranks, if you have a problem, it's unlikely that that bureaucracy is going to fix your problem. When you make your problem someone else's problem that's higher ranking, you're going to get it fixed. Yep. And they can't fire you. I'm already <laughs> out. And they already fucked me. <laughs> yep. So due diligence, right? Just do your fucking job. Like, I, And I'm not asking. Oftentimes people think that due diligence is like going way above and beyond. It's not. It's just being a human, being polite, and you know, using your brain, right? It's being thorough. So here's what law enforcement does when they there's this term due diligence that will get us fired if we don't do it. Here's an ex- example of it. So do what a reasonable person would do to ensure that you've properly done your di- done your job. Someone calls 911. All we have is a GPS location, right? It's, and it's like estimated. So I go, okay, I'm going to go check out that area, see if I can find the 911 caller and make sure everything's okay. So I go there. Now, if I drive through that area, if it's like kind of near a street and I just I go to the speed limit, I blow right through, and on my little laptop I go check the area and I go to my next call. That's not due diligence. If someone, let's say someone's fucking tied up in the trunk of a car there, right? Or there's a fight going on, but I'm like, yeah, that's probably not my fight. Like, they didn't flag me down. Or if there's a car crash, and I'm like, not my car crash. Like, I get fucking fired, right? They say, you didn't do your due diligence. So it's different for every person. It's different for every scenario. But what I would do when I get a regular 911 call, and there's not much information, I go to that area. I ask a few people, hey, did you see anything weird going on here? Nope. And I ask someone else, did you see anything weird going on here? And they go, nope. And then I knock on a door or two, and I sit and wait for a couple minutes, and I listen, and I look, and then I type into my computer for, you know, CYA, cover your ass. I type in, I checked the area, I spoke to multiple people, I didn't see or hear anything, and neither did the people I talked to. I will, maybe I'll... I'll try and swing by this location later today to double check. That seems pretty fucking reasonable to me. Like, yep. I it's it's not hard, right? Nope. Let me give you another another example. Due diligence. S- you write an email, right? Let's say hypothetically, I wrote an email to another professional today, and I said, "Hey, guy. I have three questions for you." And I write fucking bullet points with numbers next to them. And I say, question number one. I attended one of your courses recently, and uh, you said we could buy products from you at the course. Well, I forgot to buy one then, but I'd like to buy one now. So can I do that? Question number two. I have a podcast. Would you like to be on that podcast? Question number three. I know that you have another course coming up soon that I'd like to attend. Is, you know, am I able to attend that? That's it. Hope you're having a great day. I checked out your website. Everything's looking good on your end. You know, I think it's great that you're doing what you're doing. See you later. How many of those three questions do you think I got answered today since we're on the topic? One. Zero. <laughs> now, I get people have bad days. I get people are busy. Well, wait. Did, did, did this person reply? Yeah, they replied, and they asked me one oh. question. Did, they just they asked a question in return. It was one sentence. They said, "Thanks for the email. I have a question for you." Uh, okay, well, <laughs> didn't answer any of my three questions. You didn't even say I don't know. You didn't say yes or no. Nothing. And I'm like, well, now ha-. I'm kind of a sarcastic asshole, and I had to like ask my roommate for help. I'm like, dude, what do I fucking say to this guy without being an asshole? Like, <laughs> like, hey, uh, maybe you should call me because you can't read, or like, I know you're busy, but could you maybe try and answer at least one of my questions or like I, that's tough for me. Sometimes I struggle with that all the time. Yeah, I do too. I usually end up saying the wrong thing. Uh, closely tied into leadership is just due diligence, right? Just communication one one Hey, I'm going to tell you this thing and you listen. And then I go, did you understand the thing I told you? Or I go, could you repeat it back to me? Hey, just so we're on the same page, can you can you just tell me what you got out of that so we're we're tracking? Just so I know what you think came out of my fucking mouth. So yeah, I'm having a pretty heated fucking day. <laughs> I had someone bump into me at the grocery store, I had someone fuck up my food order. 
I had like, you know, <laughs> here we go, bitch fest. I had someone, uh, the guy that made my sub at the sub counter had uh-huh. finished making my sub, had it in his hand, wrapped up with the sticker on it, like like the uh, the barcode scanning sticker on it, uh-huh. and was getting ready to hand it over the counter to me. And someone walked up and started talking to him about something totally unrelated. So he holds the sub, looks at the other person, listens, listens, listens. And I'm standing there, and I'm reaching over the counter. I'm like, uh, I can't reach. Uh. And he's holding the sub, and he listens. And the other person goes, okay, so did you get all that? And he goes, oh, okay, thanks. And then he hands me the sub. I'm like, are you, are you fucking high? Like, he how? probably was. And it was a really nice grocery store. Um, it's really unlikely. Um, but like, dude, that that blows my mind when people do that. Yeah. Or you go, hey, hold on one second. Let me hand this guy this sub because I can't multitask. <laughs> That's it. Just say, like, <laughs> hold on, hand the sub. Okay, now talk. Like, if I right. can't hand something to someone and talk at the same time, I've got an issue. <laughs> I would have told the guy to hold on, and then I would have handed you the sub and interacted with you briefly, and then I would have went back to whatever the guy needed. Dude, it's like UTM all over again. Ultimate training munitions. <laughs> it's not so ultimate if you can't get your product. I don't know how hard <laughs> and it is. There's, there's really no training either if you can't get your product. There's no training if you don't have a training product. Which, by the way, I told them, let's start the process for me sending your shit back. Mail me the fucking return forms. And they still haven't gotten here. So it's going to be a long time before their billing gets settled. Yep. And over another week. Man. Man, oh man, oh man. So what do you think about due diligence? Um... I think it's the normal operation for a well-rounded functioning adult. Um, I don't know. I, I, I try to have, I try to me, due diligence means like, you know, being thorough about everything. And I try to do that with everything that I do. So I don't understand people like that. And you're in the medical field, right? So you probably have to deal with that at your job, correct? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I have to be extremely thorough. A, because people's lives depend on it, and B, because my job depends on it. Mm-hmm. Well, you know what the good thing is? The guy who I asked just to answer three like simple, polite questions, um, his job kind of depends on it, too. I don't pay all his bills, but... I would be paying him more money that he doesn't want. Apparently, I don't. Dude, this blows my mind. <laughs> I uh, I hope it's not the person I'm thinking of. Oh, I don't think it is. No. Okay. Good, because I was wanting to take one of his classes or a few of his classes. Yeah. Yeah, Gary V talks about that too. I know we were mentioning him earlier today off of the podcast. Um, Man, I'm loving his shows oh, right now, it, dude. He's like, be polite, be patient, like interact, be approachable, answer fucking questions. Take five. He's like, give your fucking phone number out to people and say, call me anytime. Like, let me get the guy that I'm talking about today in this email. I'm hoping he does come on the podcast. And if he listens to this, hopefully he chuckles because maybe he was having a bad day or he was super busy. But, you know, let me defend him real quick. From the very first interaction I had with his company up until today, every email had his personal phone number on it. And he said multiple times during his course, if at any point it's 2 a.m. and you're out doing something and you think my knowledge can help you do it, he's like, wake me up in the middle of the night and call me and ask me your question and I'll help you. So let me defend him right now, this unknown guy. <laughs> I'm, just, dude, I'm just having a bad fucking day. You know, maybe he was too. Uh, yeah. if, that, if that's his normal MO, yeah, then... I'm, he gets a pass. I just, yeah. you know, just on the wrong day today is all. Not to mention, dude, I've tried, like, on my other website, I've reached out to, like, three or four different people, and over, like, I'm I'm open to the possibility that maybe I'm the idiot. I'm open to that. But I've asked, like, three or four people. I'm like, hey, I got this other new podcast. It's kind of tactical-ish. I think you would love it. 
I would love to hear your thoughts on it. And I try to be polite and try and give them all the information I can. And I'm like, what do you think? Do you want to be interviewed on the show? And a couple of them have been like, yeah. And I'm like, all right, cool. Let's pick a date. And then they're like, you know, just kidding. No. Like, it's really, it's like, it's creeping me out, man. That is weird. Maybe they, maybe I give them the website address and they're like, nope, sorry, checked out your shit. You're a weirdo. Like, they haven't said that, but I'd almost prefer that at this point. Like, all right, cool. We're different. Yeah, but your website's not bad. I say a lot of sex jokes and a lot of bad words, but I don't, I don't know. Whatever. So? So speaking of which, we haven't had really a guest interview on either of our podcasts in a little while. I know. So let's do the pitch. If you want to be on the podcast at libertymastermindpodcast.com, drop us a contact form or uh, fill out a guest form on the website. Super easy. If you want to be yep. on the Uncensored Tactical podcast, shoot me an email, uncensoredtactical at gmail.com, or go to the website and just click contact. I got also- a couple of cool people that are lined up with definite yeses we're just waiting for a date is all awesome um another thing that we're recently doing is we've started a discord server the link is on our um liberty mastermind facebook page so go over there and click the link and if you're not signed up with discord then get signed up because it's you should be and uh chat with us this is eventually this is this is the start of leading into a live show so step one right can you get there without facebook because that's probably uh yeah um, okay just go yeah, to, can, just go to discord yeah cool and then create an account and then look for liberty mastermind podcast I can do that. I'd love to. Um, this, this might be a short episode today, but um, what else do we got on the burner? Dude, that's fine. After tomorrow, after 8 o'clock tomorrow, uh, 8 p.m., I'll have worked like, I think like 122 hours this week or something. So I'm, I'm kind of, kind of uh, spent well, since it's on the tip of my tongue, let me go ahead and tell you another leadership-ish, almost, it's all, it is related to due diligence, right? So mm-hmm. leadership 101, super easy, right? Not difficult, just the basics. Not like mm-hmm. how to handle a sensitive thing and do the, no, like just 101. If you're in a leadership position, I'm sorry, I don't even like using it that way. If you're in a position where you have people that you are responsible for, whether it's supervision or training or teaching or just accounting for them, right? Wouldn't it be a good idea to know who those people are? Yes. That's 101. Who yes. works Who works for me? Oh, I'm new here. Who, who works for me here? Uh, I mean, get me a list, right? That's easy. Yep. Okay. Let's go to like two, leadership 202, right? <laughs> Learning where to bump it up. If you can't figure that part out, stick with that. If, if you've got that, like if you've got the I should know who works for me bug, if you understand that one, let's bump it up. We're going to graduate. Level two. You get a list sent to your email inbox or like handed to you personally, and you're like, hey, the big shift change is coming up. Here are the people that are going to be on your under your command soon. All right? Do you mm-hmm. know where I'm going with this? Uh-huh. Are you also the oracle here tonight? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> here, here's the... Like, here's where we're going. You get that list of new people that are about to be under your command. Let's talk about the return on investment for this, right? Hey, I just wanted to reach out to you. I know you're going to be working for me soon. My name is this. What's your, like, what's your name? At least how do I say your name correctly? Like, that's, that's, that's also 101. How do you work for me? How do I say, fucking say your name, right? Yep. Hey, you're going to work for me. Nice to meet you. I just wanted to let you know I'm, I'm excited to have some new people on the squad. Right? That sounds easy, right? Yep. Let's do a real-life case study. This is not me, but a friend of mine that I talked to recently who works for a law enforcement agency. Shift change was coming up, right? So he was going to a new supervisor. It was a week out. 
hadn't heard a thing. So right. he walked up to the guy during work hours. They were both on duty, but they work kind of different areas. Mm-hmm. So he walks up to the guy, the higher ranking guy, and goes, Hey, uh, my name's this. I just want to introduce myself to you. I know I'm coming to your squad soon. Well, that, that's also a good tactic if you're a new guy, but sometimes depending on the rank and the structure, sometimes that's not an option. You don't just knock on the door and say, hey, open up. I'm going to introduce myself. Like I feel in my heart and soul, if you're a supervisor, this needs to work both ways. And it's going to work much better if it starts your way to your subordinates instead of them to you. Like I feel that if shit rolls downhill, the schedule also rolls downhill. You make time in your schedule to go meet with the people that you're in charge of. They don't make time in their schedule to ask you if you have time to meet them. That just sounds bizarre to me, right? Right. So the guy walks up to his new supervisor, who's going to be a supervisor of his in a week, and says, I wanted to introduce myself. My name's this. And the guy looks at him like like he's an idiot. He goes, uh, okay, see you around. Well, that guy? That's part one. <laughs> that guy is going places. Yeah. That guy will be promoted and promoted and promoted and promoted and he will retire super high rank yeah to his highest level of incompetence yes here's part two the shift change happens right this higher ranking guy walks up to my buddy and goes hey i'm your new supervisor i just wanted to uh, introduce myself to you and he looks at him and he goes uh i met you last week when I came into your office to introduce myself. And so the higher ranking guy goes, oh, okay, and walks away. <laughs> oh, my God. How, let me ask you another question. When it's time to work late and it's time to put in those extra hours or it's time to go the extra effort and that guy's your fucking boss, how much drive do you have to get the job done? Not much. Just enough drive to keep your job. And that, that happens to, I'm sure, millions of fucking people across the country and the world. If you I work say, for an asshole, wh- wh- what's the point? Yep, and most people feel like, well, I could go somewhere else, but I'm just going to work for another asshole. So why not just stay here, go through the motions, earn a paycheck, fuck it. So here's here's my mental experiment or kind of my question for the audience, right? Everybody in this audience or everyone listening, ask yourself this question. Have I, how many of my bosses, supervisors, leaders, coaches, whatever, pick someone that's like at a higher rank than you in any organization across your whole life? What percentage of them, like let's say out of a hundred different bosses you've had, how many of them have, would you work for again in a heartbeat? Is it like 99 of them and there was one asshole? Is it like half of them? Because in my life, like hearing those stories, like you're always shocked, which is a sad state. Like that gives you a clue. You shouldn't be shocked when someone goes, dude, I would work for that guy again in a fucking heartbeat. I'd even take less pay to do it. When like, when someone says that you're like, wow, he must be a good boss. Right. Why isn't it the other way around when you're like, "Hey, the guy was just so, so shouldn't you be like, wow, that's shocking that he was so, so because he's a fucking supervisor. He gets paid more. He asked for that promotion he took the promotion, and he can't fucking do communication 101? Yep. Most people are taught, though, that you have to be an asshole to be in management. Jesus. Because they're told that if you're not, people will walk all over you. They'll take advantage of you. Well. And yeah, that will happen. You know, there's there's a few people that will do that, but you make it real clear, real quick. Look, I, I will do my best for you if you do your best for me. Mm-hmm. If you fuck me over, I'm going to be the worst fucking boss you've ever had in your life. I will make you quit. You'll be so miserable. Blows my mind. Mm-hmm. Oh my god! At I least, almost, at least that's how I handle it. Yeah, you know what scares me about this that we're talking about this today? Like, what scares me is that I—I'm sure I've done this to people in the past. I'm human, right? Like, it mm-hmm. scares me that 
oh my god what if i'm doing this to people right now like what if they've texted me and i'm like eh <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's easy to fix other people's problems. Sometimes you don't see your own. Yep. That's that's fucking freaks me out. Yeah, I was sitting here thinking about that too. Like all of my rescue guys, I'm like, have I talked to all of them recently? Asked them how they were doing. Ask them what's going on. If there's anything I can do for them. Most of them I have. But so, um, that, that's a good point. Because while I think that you can't teach leadership, because God knows that the fucking military and government and law enforcement, we know that they have military courses you have to attend to get a certificate for before you can get promoted. They don't teach you how to be a leader. They just talk to you about it, right? You can't, I don't, it's up for a philosophical debate, but I don't think you make people into leaders. I think you have it or you don't. But talking about this shit could be a, a good reminder, like, Hey, I thought I was doing pretty good, but oh, let me do that again because I haven't done that in a while. Like being a leader doesn't mean you got to be perfect. Sometimes people need to remind you about shit, but once you get the reminder, that's what makes a difference. Some people might be like, "Eh, fuck it." Other people might be like, "Oh shit, good point. Let me go. Let me go do that real quick." Right. So this is this is more of a fucking law enforcement podcast today. It should have been on. Maybe I'll double uh, double produce this on both websites, but. Here's one of my other principles. If you are in a supervisory position, this goes along with like leadership 101 and due diligence, right? If you're in a supervisory position, let's say you are in charge of, let's do a big number, right? A hundred people. Mm-hmm. I'm in charge of a hundred people, right? Whether it's a hundred other supervisors or, or if it's total, like I am in charge of, you know, four different supervisors and then eight of their subordinates, and then what, whatever the math is, like 60 of their people, right? 60, 70 mm-hmm. of their people. Even if like it's broken up with rank st- structure, how hard is it in 365 days to spend 60 seconds with one person once a day? Yep. I'm not talking about like write a novel about their life story. Like If you've worked for someone for three years... Should at some point you have like been face to face with them and shaken their hand and said, nice to meet you. My name is this. I don't even know how to say your fucking name. And you've worked for me like for three years. It's not hard. Here's the fucked up part. In jobs that have a turnover and you change departments and change bosses, a lot of times there's a rollover. So like you're with the same 80 people this year, but you got 20 new guys. Okay, so that slashes it in half. How do I meet 20 people within the next 365 days? I have no I have no sympathy for people in what you call a quote unquote leadership position that have never met their subordinates. Nope. Even if there's a rank separation, you know how much that would mean if you're like let's say you're at a huge agency, right? Like NYPD. Like let's say you're I don't know their ranks, but you're like a commissioner or something, right? You're like super high up. But you got like two thousand people under your belt. Just picking a number, right? That like quite a bit. How much do you think it would mean to the guy on the street if you're like, dude, today you're the guy. I'm trying to meet everybody. I know I'll never accomplish it, but I just wanted to come chat with you. Let me buy you a fucking coffee. Let me take five minutes. Yep. You know what that guy's going to say that day? He's going to be like, yo, I met the fucking guy that took me to get a coffee. Yep. And then that way when you send an email like, hey, you guys need to clean up your mailboxes in the squad room. They're a mess. Then at least you can be like, you know what? He's right. We do need to clean them. Okay, but, you know, at least he fucking knows my name, right? Knows how to say my name. He just didn't hit send all on email. Right. Because I know he made the fucking effort with me. And even if your buddy never met him, he'd be like, oh, dude, fucking can't wait for it until he takes me out for a cup of coffee. Yeah, you might be you might be like, you yeah, know, he took you out first. Wah. But you, look, you, you can see the evidence. He's doing it. And if your next buddy is like, hey, he met me today. Cool. Yeah. And, and a little bit goes such a long way for morale. Such a long way. You have first-line supervisors that don't do that. Like, the, your immediate supervisor. So you're talking like eight, nine people they're in charge of. Mm-hmm. Every Now, in police work, a lot of people are surprised to hear this, but, like, you might go a whole 12-hour shift and never see your supervisor. You might go a whole week and never see your supervisor, depending on... Like, if you don't have to check in at the squad room, if you just get in your car and log in on the radio or whatever. 
So there's guys that I work with that like that. Like they like to be left alone. They like to do their own their own shift, their own way, and they go home. I get that. What I don't get is the guys that do want to interact with their leadership. Where the fuck are you? Where are you? You're, you know what they're doing? They're busy supporting the bureaucracy. Mm-hmm. They're busy. They're not doing the same job as you. They're busy typing up PowerPoints and they're typing up spreadsheets and they're making phone calls and they're in their office with their AC. And this, if this is not you and you're listening, I know, I know there's people, my Sergeant, uh, I didn't really have a sergeant in the last year I was working, but uh, my direct supervisor was fucking handling calls, 911 calls with me, and he was fucking putting people in handcuffs, and we were dragging people out together. That goes so far. And he didn't do it all night, but there were nights where you'd see him three or four times on the radio, like, yeah, I'll, I'll handle that for the guys. I know they're busy. Don't worry about it. I'll go deal with that issue. And he'd drive his little police car. You know, special police car because he's a higher rank, but he'd drive his little police car to the scene, handle the whole thing, and then and then go back to the office. That's awesome. Right. Yeah. And as soon as you're removed from taking those calls, your whole world changes. My priorities are I got to get this spreadsheet done. Well, I th- then why are you my supervisor? Why don't we just pay you the same as me and we can call you a paperwork person? We'll just put you in the admin bureau. You could take your badge off and your gun, and we could just give you a little desk with some folders on it. And you could be the spreadsheet guy. And you can be the, like, you can, there's a guy at my agency whose entire job is to be the liaison for the fire department to ensure that we're up to fire code. And it's not like he does that sometimes, like as a collateral job, like on the weekends or like once a week. That's all mm-hmm. he does. People don't know this either, but there's a limit to how many officers or agents or deputies that an agency can have, right? So mm-hmm. they say, in the budget, as far as badged and certified law enforcement goes, you can only have X amount, 300, 400, whatever. Well, if some of those people are taking up office jobs to only do office responsibilities, you know what that means for the people in that city or county or state? That means they have less yes. people helping them out. And they're paying for more people, and they're getting less people. I don't, for the life of me, I don't know. <laughs> Oh God! I wish I were. I wish I were in charge of that. I'd be like, "Great, you want to be the liaison guy? Take that rank off your collar, take that gun off. We'll just uncertify you, and you can sit at a desk as long as you like." I was about to say he he still carries a badge and a gun, doesn't he? Of course he, he does. <sighs> yeah. Like you can get a minimum wage worker to do that same job. You walk around with keys. And you have a code book in one hand for like a fire code book and your keys in the other hand and you give the fire chief a tour of whatever building he wants whenever he wants it. You can do that for minimum wage without being a police officer. Like that's yeah. just logistics. That's all it is. Yeah. Do you guys have that many police stations where he goes around like every day and makes sure things are compliant? Like, I would I would imagine with fire code it doesn't change daily. Like I wouldn't think that like if you install a fireproof door, I wouldn't think it disappears the next day. So I have a I have a feeling that once things are squared away, they're pretty good for a while. Yeah. I don't know everything he does, but I have a sneaky suspicion that he doesn't work a full 8 hours every day. He's <laughs> probably not exhausted when he's done. Probably not. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> All right. Uh, How's your, are you feeling better? Yeah, I feel a lot better. I'm, I gotta, uh, <laughs> Got to vent a little bit. Dude, I'm going to a bonfire tonight. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make sure that I have a designated driver on the way home. Excellent. I'm going to try to get eight hours of sleep tonight. That would be great. Oh, it's... fuck. Let's, uh, tell the audience what we're drinking. Right? We can do that for both shows. I'm drinking water. I'm drinking nothing. Wow, that's a first. I had my protein shake, and I just got back from the gym, so I'll probably start drinking and write more in my book soon. Neither of us are drinking on a podcast. I I think that is an actual first. I'm shocked. I was telling my wife today, I've got to get some store alcohol. Yeah. Oh, boy. Well, 
I don't even know if we have an audience at this point. I do so much bitching and complaining. I got to start <laughs> being more positive. Yeah. You know what's, sad, what's funny? Let me tell the audience this. I'm actually really fucking happy when I'm not recording. <laughs> like, I'm super <laughs> positive. I'm like I'm polite to people. I, all I do is smile all day. I listen to music when I drive. Like, I'm super happy. I just, when I talk about this, the bureaucracy and law enforcement and government, like, I've done so much of it my whole life. I, like... Call me crazy. I feel like a bureaucracy is a living beast. Like I feel like it has its own like hive brain. You know, also our format is about liberty and there's so little liberty yeah. right now that it you can't help but bitch about things. So uh, I don't know. I mean, some people like to listen to shows just to get all riled up like the host does you know i do i used to love that man there's a you know who will cow is you ever yeah know? yeah will, will cow majority used to love that used to love that show i had a military operator buddy of mine and we were working in miami at the time in miami florida and he said uh he's like dude me listening to political talk radio and will cow majority on my drive home after work highly armed is not safe for everybody around me <laughs> He used to say it every day, like it was a new thing every day. I loved it. <laughs> oh man, dude! I haven't listened to Will Cow and fuck what since 2012, maybe. Yeah, I haven't listened to any of those guys in a long, long time. Let's do a little. We'll, we'll fade the music out right now. Okay. A little bonus here. Who okay. Who does Captain Jack listen to? Oh man, I listen to right now. I listen to uh, Gary V. I listen Love to um, Sean Croxton. Um, and that's really about it right now. Sean Croxton's another. He does a daily quote show, and it's it's motivational speakers. He plays little, you know, five to seven minute clips, maybe ten minutes sometimes, uh, of people's motivational speeches. It's pretty good. Um, but definitely Gary V. Right now, God, I I'm just absorbing his content and getting pretty fucking pumped up. 